Oh, praises to the Most High. It's another beautiful day. And the Shabbat is getting ready to roll in. And we come out weekend and we go. Uh, the other brothers are not out here with me. I, I decided to come out here. This Lord put it on my spirit to come out here and just do this work. Because the other brothers, they may be busy or whatever, you know, is going on in their lives. But I got to still come out here if the, if the spirit leads me to do this. So... I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with uh, Psalms 85:11. How he said, "Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness is gonna look down from heaven." That's what he said in the book of Psalms, chapter 85, verse 11. And every every Shabbat we're out here. I know everybody sees us. We're usually here or at that park, at Riverfront Park. We're over there by that tree every Shabbat. So we come out every Shabbat. It's not the Shabbat, but it's coming in. So I'm out here a little early because the Lord put it on my spirit to come out here to do this. And I'm going to bring out uh, 2 Samuel chapter 23, and I'm going to start at verse 2. And it reads, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me and his word in my tongue. Verse 3 says, The God of Israel, the rock of Israel, spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of Yahweh. So anybody that's in rulership, the Most High God says, you got to be just, ruling in the fear of God. But a lot of, a lot of people, they haven't took this to heart. This is why this place is on its last legs, because they didn't take this to heart. He said, anybody that's in rulership, you have to rule in the fear of God. Ruling, you have to be you ruling in the fear of him. And then verse 4 says, and he shall be as a light of the morning when the sun rises, even a, a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after the rain. So this is what he said. You, you're gonna, you should be doing things decently and in order if you're going to be ruling over men. But a, lot of, but a lot of people, they don't do this. This is why this place is on its last legs. And from there, I'm going to go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 4 through 8. Bear with me. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 4 through 8, and it reads, And I will turn thee back, and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them, clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company, with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. So the, the prophet Ezekiel is getting into what's going on right now, how the Lord is gathering people together for a battle. That battle over there with Ukraine and Russia, that's just the beginning. There's going to be more. He's going to gather a lot more nations. China's going to get involved. Iran's going to get involved. This place is going to be involved. They're going to, this place is getting ready to get the ICBM missiles. This is why we have to come out here and warn the people of the, the oncoming uh, danger that's coming here. Verse 5, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with, with them. All of them with shield and helmet. Gomer. Now, when people don't understand the Bible, but Gomer is talking about Russia. That Russia, they're going to be, they're one of the main armies that's going to be involved in this. And all his bands, the house of uh, Tor Torgomar and the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. So it's going to be a lot more people getting involved in this battle, not just Russia and Ukraine. It's going to be a lot more nations getting involved because the Lord is the one that's mustering this battle. He's the one that's putting the spirit on all these nations to do this battle. This is the Lord, this is the Lord God that's doing this. He's the one in control. He's the one that created the heavens and the earth. That's, that's who's doing it. 
no no man had the technology to build the the, the nuclear missiles that's the most high god that put the he put that that uh, wisdom knowledge and understanding in them to be able to build those missiles and so all we're coming to do is just warn the people on the oncoming danger verse 6 Gomer and all his bands, the house of Turgamar and the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Verse 7, be thou prepared and be and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that, thou, that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. So the Lord is, he's, he's talking about some nations that's going to be involved in this battle. Verse 8, and after many days, Thou shalt be visited in the latter years. Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste. But it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. And all this battle that's getting ready to take place is because of what people did to the nation of Yasharala. This is why this battle is going to happen anyway. A lot of people don't understand what's going on, but the Bible has all the all the uh, information. It's always been there. And this movie is going to play itself out, whether people like it or not. The, the, the counsel of God is going to stand. Everything he said in the scriptures is coming to pass, whether people like it or not. And a lot of people, I know they don't like to hear the word because the word of God is so sharp. Like it, like it says in Hebrews, it's sharp and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it gets deep down into the bone and the marrow. That's why people don't like to hear it. Because it, it gets down into their soul and spirit. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. This is why people don't like to hear the Bible. And that's why the prophet Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 5 and 14, the word, the word is going to be like fire and the people would... And he said, it's going to devour them. That's what this word does to people. It devours them. It, it, it just burns up their spirit. This is the word of God. This is why it does that. It's supposed to make you feel uncomfortable. If you're living wrong, that's what it's supposed to do to you. And from there, I'm going to go to the book of Joel, chapter 3. Joel chapter 3, verse 1 through 12, it's, it reads, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, he's talking about the southern kingdom of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and he's also talking about the northern kingdom from Ephraim on down. He's going to bring all of them into Jerusalem. It, verse 2, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. That's over in the Middle East. This is where that war is going to take place, over in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So this is, this is what the problem is. The Lord has a controversy with this land because of what you, what they've done to his heritage. This is what the problem is. And my Bible has been ripping apart because I use it so much, it's been ripping apart. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna read, uh, continue on with Joel. Verse, uh, Verse 3 again, and I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So this is why this battle is coming. The Lord is, he's, he hasn't forgotten what's been done to his heritage and to his people. He hasn't forgotten about it. This is what this whole battle is about, getting us back into our proper place and back to our homeland because this is not our rest that's why the, uh, the prophet Micah said that he said this is not our rest he said come he actually was telling us to come out of it come out of this come out of all your ideology all of your doctrine all of your wine 
all the false, all the lies you're pushing in this society. This is what the Most High God is saying. The Bible is a mystery book. A lot of people don't understand what it's saying, but the Lord has showed some people the mysteries of this Bible. This is what it is. And that's why people have a problem with it. Uh, verse 3. And they that have they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. See, this is what this is what the Lord said that this is why he has the controversy with this land. Because they our people were sold. This is not our rest. Our homeland is Jerusalem. It says it right there in Galatians 4 and 26. He said, But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. That's the mother of us all. This is the word of God. Oh yeah, people have a problem with what that Bible says, but his counsel is going to stand. He said that in Isaiah 46. He said he declares the end from the beginning, and his counsel is going to stand. He said you, you should you should have thought on these things. People should have took these things to heart, because whatever is written in that this Bible, it's coming to pass, because he's the one that created the heavens and the earth. No man did this. This was the Most High God, Yahweh, that did this. There was no man that had the, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to do something like this. This is the Most High, Yahweh, that did it. And then he gave, he gave his son, Yahweh Shai, which everybody calls Jesus, but he had a Hebrew name. His name was not Jesus. The, the letter J didn't come in until like the 1400s, within the 14 to 1600s. So that's impossible for his name to be Jesus. That was Cesar Borger, and everybody knows that. And it's not a, this thing isn't about color. This goes to bloodline. If your bloodline goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then you're part of this heritage, and you're part of this lineage. This isn't a race thing like people think. This is about a bloodline. He gave that covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that covenant, it's not gonna change because people don't like what he did from the foundation of the world. It's not about the skin. If you if you if your father is is any of the tribes, then this is for you. That's what this is about. How you doing, sis? We just out here preaching the word as usual. This is what we gonna do until Christ cracks that sky. And that, and this is what he commanded us to do, to go out to the highways and to the byways, and as many as we find, bid them to the marriage. This is what the most high God said to do. I'm gonna read verse uh Four. Yeah, and what have you to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? Now he's getting into some African nations right here that, that were, they were the ones running, catching our people and selling them to the Edomites and Ishmael, the Arabs. Everything is written in the Holy Scriptures and nobody is going unpunished for what they did here in the body. And all the coast of Palestine, and then he said all the coast of Palestine, Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? So this is the Lord said, are you going, are you going to pay me back? You're mad at me because I chose Israel? Is this why you did my people like this? Because I chose them? He was asking the question, are you going to pay me back? Because I didn't choose you other nations? Because there's 18 nations in the world but the Most High God chose Israel out of all those 18 nations. And it reads, Because you have taken my silver and my gold, and carry, because you have taken my silver and my gold, and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things, what was his goodly pleasant things? He's talking about his people. Because when you read Lamentations chapter 4, he actually says the precious sons of Zion are comparable to fine gold. He said, how are we esteemed? He says, we're like earthen pitchers. He said, that's the work of the hands of the potter. So that's what he was talking about. When, it, when they've taken his, his gold, he looks at his children like fine gold. Uh, verse 6, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians, that you might remove them far from their borders. So they removed us far from our borders, because this is not our rest. We're not supposed to be in this place. This is a place of punishment. This, we were just here for punishment because our forefathers didn't want to listen to, our, to Moses. 
when he, when he brought our people out of the land of Egypt and he gave us the law, statutes, and commandments. This is the reason why our people are going through this, why we're the last hired and the first fired, why we're being oppressed. This is the reason, because the, the Lord did this for a punishment, but this is not our rest. Verse 7, Behold, I will raise them out of the people, whether you have sold them, and I will return your recompense upon your own head. So everybody that did this to God's people, listen to what he says. That recompense is coming upon your own head. He says it's going that you what goes up this is what the saying here in society is what comes around goes around so you guys just remember you, you got something coming and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the children of Judah Judah that's that's Christ's tribe because it is evident that our Lord sprang out of the tribe of Judah of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood but but Judah that's the one that everybody seems to hate so much. That's Christ's tribe. And it says it in Hebrews 7 verse 14. He said, it is evident. It's, it's without a shadow of a doubt that our Lord sprang out of the tribe of Judah. People have a problem with Judah. This is why they're always coming after Judah, Benjamin, Levi. This is why they do that. But like I said before, this is not about color. This is about lineage. It goes back to the, to the, 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 the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is what this is about. But a lot of people think this is about, oh, we're, we're, we're preaching hate. No, we're preaching the Bible as it, is, as it is written. We're just reading the Bible as it is written. Everything that's written in the Bible, that's what we're reading. Bluetooth disconnected. Having a little difficulties with the amp, but that's all right. Every time the word is going forward, this seems to happen. You know, it always is, a, is an issue because of, because a lot of times this word, the devil doesn't want it to go forth. So we got to just keep pushing it. And, you know, this the Sabbath is coming in. The Lord told us to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. So this is why we do it. You know, it's not the Sabbath yet, but it's coming in. It's, it's uh, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. So we got to do what the Lord told us. He said to go out to the highways and do this. This is what the Lord told us to do. And he said, don't, don't worry about people's haughty looks. Don't worry about their impudent eyes. Don't worry about any of that because he said he's going to be our shield and our buckler, our fortress and our refuge, a very present help in a time of trouble. So we're not afraid to do this work. We're not afraid of people's haughty looks. We're not afraid of anything. God told us who to, who to fear. He said, fear the one that can hurt the body and cast the soul into hell. So that's who I'm going to fear. I'm not going to worry about no man. No man, no man here. Verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. So the Lord is preparing war. That war is the Lord. He's doing that. It's the Lord putting the spirit on the people to fight. He's mustering this battle. That's the Lord doing this. Everything that's happening, it's not by coincidence. All things work together for the good, he said in Romans. According to his purpose. It's all according to God's purpose. Not according to what man is doing. A man may say he's going to do this or that, but it says that, that the Lord's will is what's going to be done. He can say he's going to do this. A man can say whatever he wants to say, but it's the Lord that's at work. He's the one that's doing everything that's going on in the earth. This is what a lot of people don't understand. The Lord is in control of the whole universe. He created everybody, but that everyone's gotten puffed up with this pride. And remember, he said he resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. He said, we better humble ourselves before the hands of the mighty God, and he'll lift us up in due season. This is what the Lord taught, said through Peter. A lot of people don't want to have humility. They're, pop, they're pompous and arrogant. They're so puffed up. They want to continue doing all this stuff that he hates. The Lord didn't tell us to do a lot of this stuff that people are doing. He gave us laws, statutes, and commandments to do here. This is what he told us to do. there I'm going to go to the book of Sirach also known as Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha and, and it reads this is Sirach 36 verse 1 through 5 and it reads 
have, have, have mercy upon us, O Lord God, of all, and behold us. And send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. So this is Ezra asking the Lord to have mercy on Israel and to send thy hurt upon all the people that seek not him. He said to go after all the adversaries. This is what Ezra was saying. This is what it says. Verse 3. Lift up thy hand against the strange nations and let them see thy power. So everybody's going to see his power. It's just a matter of time. Everybody's going to see the Lord's power. You guys see it when he sends a tornado. You see it when he sends the earthquakes. You see it when you, he sends the tsunamis. You guys see what the Lord is capable of doing, but yet you still have no fear of him. He shows his power and his majesty and his might every day and nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to care of what he's actually doing here. Verse 4. As thou was sanctified in us before them, so be thou magnified among them before us. And let them know thee as we have known thee, that there is no God but, on, but only thou, O God. So Ezra's is saying, you need to understand that there's only one God. And that's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There is no other God. There's only one. The one and only. I know a lot of people may think there's other gods, but he's, he's flexing in this precept. He's letting it be known that he's the one and only. That's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's no other one. So he's letting everybody know. They're going to know his strength and his might. When he's, watch when he sends another tornado. Just watch his power. This is what he's talking about in this. Watch when he sends another tsunami. Let's see when people call, oh, Lord, Lord. But he's not going to hear it because he's actually going to laugh at people's calamity when they're going through their distress and their anguish. This is what he actually said. When they're going through all that stuff, they're gonna, he's going to laugh at their calamity. He's not going to listen to people when they're going through all these things because they had no fear of the Most High God, Yahweh. People have, have no fear of him. So this is why he's saying this. These are warnings, people. I'm not out here just to be seen. I'm out here to, to blow the trumpet. This is what he commanded us to do, to come out and blow the trumpet. So this is what I'm doing. I'm being obedient to what the, the Heavenly Father told me to do. He said to blow the trumpet. He said, send them, give them warning from me. So this is what it says in the prophet Ezekiel. Give them warning from me. So this is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm giving the warning from the Most High God. This is not my words. This is what saith the Lord. And a lot of people have a problem with what he says. And I'm going to read on. Uh, verse 6. Show new, uh, new signs and make others strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, and that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Because the Lord is going to show his wondrous works. He shows it every day. Every time the sun comes up, that's his wondrous works. When he puts the moon up at night and the stars, that's his wondrous works. He shows his attributes, and they're clearly seen just by the things that he made. But then a lot of people will say, oh, that's oh, that's just Mother Nature. They won't give the Most High his reverence. They'll say that's just Mother Nature. How you doing, brother? See, a lot, good. A lot of people will just say that's Mother Nature instead of giving the credit to who the credit is due. This is God that did this. And his name's Yahweh. And his son's name, Yahweh Shai. This is who we're talking about. And that's who's getting, Yahweh Shai is getting ready to come and visit this earth. And he's going to make the crooked way straight and the rough edges smooth. It's just a matter of time. This place is almost finished. And a lot of people, they don't, they don't seem to believe what this Bible is saying. But this place is almost done. Let me read on. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Wow. He said he's going to destroy all the adversaries and all the enemies. This is what the Lord God said he's going to do. He's going to destroy all his adversaries and all his enemies. And you got to remember, he said in the book of James, to be the world's friend, you become God's enemy. This is what he said. To be the world's friend, you, become, you make yourself God's enemy. He says, let me read that again. Uh, raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away thy adversary and destroy the enemy. This is what the Lord is saying. He said, destroy the enemies. So it's just a matter of time before he takes care of all the people that hate him. 
In Proverbs 8, verse 16, he says, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early, they're going to find me. But, he, but then also in Deuteronomy chapter 7, he says that I'm going to repay them that hate me to their face. He said he's not going to be slack to all those that hate him. He says he's going to repay them to their face. He's going to pay you a visit. See, a lot of people, they, they like to get visits. They like people to come by their house and have coffee and tea and do all that good stuff and sit down and have dinner. But the kind of visitation the Most High God is saying in this Bible, that's not the kind of visit you want. When he pays you that visit, what he's talking about in this Bible, he's coming to destroy you. That's what he's talking about in this Bible when he pays you that visit. He's talking about everybody that's against him. He's talking about all the adversaries. Not just, he, he, he's not talking about just one person. He, anybody that hates him. Because he said that. He said, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. So he's making a bold statement. That's his own words. People can laugh at this all they want. And, and guess what? That's even in the Bible. He said, all those that say, aha, 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 are going to be confounded. He actually talked about the people that laugh at the Bible. That's even in the Bible. He already knew people were going to laugh at the Bible. So he put that in the Bible. That they're going to be greatly confounded that say, aha, 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 aha. So people can laugh at the Bible. But it's still not going to go unpunished. If you're laughing at what God is saying, he's coming after you that much quicker for laughing at what he said in the Bible. He's gonna, he's coming after you that much quicker. So it's just, it's just a matter of time. People gotta get their lives together. This is the message. People need to listen to what the words of God is saying and stop lollygagging around here. You know, they're too complacent and just doing whatever they want, but I can guarantee you it's not going unpunished. The word of God is, is what it is. Yahweh Shai said, I came to, into this world to give testimony of the truth. He didn't tell no lies. There was no guile in Yahweh Shai's mouth. He spoke nothing but the truth. And now, so he's gonna make sure when it's, this place is, when he corrects this place, it's gonna be a righteous kingdom. There's not gonna be no more deceit in this place, no more lies, no more death, no more sorrow. It's not gonna be no more wickedness after he's done with this place. He's coming to make the crooked way straight and the rough edge is smooth. That's what he's coming for. And from there, I'm going to grab Jeremiah 16, verse 19 through 21. And this Bible is so ripped up, just bear with me, because this is a ripped up Bible. So they, they, they're, they're, it's, it's ironic that they're laughing because I was just talking about that. All those that say, aha, aha, that's actually in Psalms chapter 70. All those that say, aha, aha, that, that's in the Bible. He says they're going to be greatly confounded that say, aha, aha. He's, he's watching. We're under the cloud of witnesses. We got the Most High Yahweh, Yahweh Shai seated on the right hand of God, and the angelic angels that's watching this place. So anybody that's laughing at this Bible, he's coming after you. I'm, I'm just going to tell you. I'm telling you what it is. He's coming after you for laughing at his word. He says, be not deceived in Galatians chapter 6. Because Yahweh is not mocked. He's not going to be made a fool of by nobody. He said, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This is what he said. So people can laugh at this Bible. And it's, I, I wouldn't advise you to laugh at the Bible. Because he said, all those that say, ah, 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 they're going to be greatly confounded for laughing at the Bible. You've marked yourself for laughing at the Bible. That's exactly what you've done. So if your, your car goes off the cliff, don't be surprised. Or if a tree falls on your house, just know that's a judgment from the Most High God. If you get swept up in a tornado, just know that's the Most High God that got you swept up in that tornado. Because it's not going unpunished for laughing at the words of God. Here's Jeremiah chapter 16, starting at 19. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. So when the people are being afflicted, that's what's going to happen. They're going to be afflicted. Real, everybody's going to get afflicted. 
that hates God, everybody here that hates him is getting ready to get afflicted. He said, the Gentile shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things where there is no profit. This is the prophet Jeremiah saying this. This is what he said. And I'm gonna read on. Shall a man make gods unto himself and they are no gods? That's what people did. They, they covered up Yahweh Shai's face and put up Cesar Borger as the anointed savior and that's not going unpunished. He's gonna deal with the people that did that. Therefore, verse 21, behold, I will this once cause them to know I will cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that my name is the Lord. He's going to let it be known when he does something to you. When he puts that judgment on you, you're going to know who judged you. There's not going to be no misunderstanding who put the judgment on you. People that laugh at this Bible, he's coming after you, and that's a guarantee. Got your phone. Go ahead. Put, put the recording on. Stopped it? No. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, Psalms 136. It's just this Bible's ripping apart. Psalms 136, verse 10 through 12. To him that smote Egypt and their firstborn, for his mercy endured forever. This is the same God that, that brought down the Egyptian army that's going to bring down this spiritual Egypt. This is spiritually Sodom and Egypt. This place Babylon in America. This place is going to go through the same punishment that happened. It's, it's like the same thing is going to go down that happened during the time of Moses. But it's not, this time it's going to be with those ICBM missiles. That's how this place is going to get it. They're going to get it with the ICBM missiles. The Lord is putting the spirit on those nations to shoot. They're going to shoot them. It's a matter. It's just a matter of time until everybody gets that fire that He talks about in this Bible. With the verse eleven, and brought out Israel from among them, for His mercy endured forever. His mercy endured forever through all generations. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm for his mercy endureth forever. This is how he brought our people out of the land of Egypt, with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. And that's exactly what's gonna happen on this, this go round. He's gonna do it with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm. And everybody's gonna know that this is the Lord when he's done with him. Verse 12, or verse 13, to him with, which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever. His mercy is gonna endure forever. It's not, it's not going to change. His mercy is going to stay the same. Because Yahweh Shai is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 